Hey guys, I wanted to give you an update on uh, the progress of our magnetometer stations. Um, I can't believe I've gotten this far, although it has taken me about 15 months. Um, this project started um, New Year's Day of 2013. Um, and to give you an idea of where we were then, or where I was then, um, I wish I had some of the old plots, but I don't. The sensor I'm using is a Honeywell HMC 58X3 uh, series. Uh, there's two different forms. Um, the 3L is the sensor that I'm using. Um, there were some issues with the earlier sensors and these are usually used in navigation and uh, GPS digital compasses and uh, this graph I have up right here um, the large circle on the left uh, these are all to scale I'm showing the size in um, to give you an idea of um, what we were able to measure then and what we're able to measure now. The sensor outputs uh, the magnetic data on the X, Y, and Z axis in units of uh, milligauss. Um, a lot of graphs that you see have their units in microteslas or nanoteslas. So represented as a sphere and this and this is to scale. Um, to convert milligauss to microtesla you either you can divide by 10 or multiply by 0.1. Um, so there's the size and scale um, with the second largest circle. And then what I've been working on recently is trying to push this sensor to its absolute limit and get down to the nanotesla resolution. And uh, I had achieved this a few weeks ago, but it was on the orders of a variation of uh, plus or minus uh, 1200 nanoteslas or 1 1.2 microtesla. And the small circle represents um, one nanotesla um, compared to a microtesla or a unit of uh, measurement in milligauss. So now that you got an idea of scale, um, we're now on down to the order of plus or minus 200 and most of the variances are only going above or below 100 nanoteslas and I've wondered a long time about noise um, and the consistency of the plots and I, I do have this uh, this plot right here is running on my development station and there's quite a bit of uh, electromagnetic interference in here yet um, I'm going to bring up another plot in a minute it's my uh, primary station and it's set up in my uh, it's set up in another room where there's no activity very little interference uh, the temperature remains constant which is really aside from um, electrical activity, um, hard and soft iron, um, interferences, the only other thing to factor in is temperature. And these are both remaining at uh, about 73, 72 degrees room temperature. So this is this plot, and they're both synchronized. Uh, this plot is my development station in a more noisy environment. Um, 
there's really too many new features to uh, to go over. Um, I'll, I'll go over a few. I'm not going to play with any of the buttons because it'll reset this plot and, and the new 24 hour plotting mode um, you know, it takes 24 hours to complete so if I uh, if I disturb it now I'm going to lose all this data and it's already five hours in but uh, you can change the sensor's gain on the fly uh, with keyboard commands um, there's not a button for it it's the only function that there's not a button for down here a lot of the features are still the same um, you can turn each axis off this will not affect the plot um, I mean it won't erase the data if I do it but you can you can select I've got all uh, I've got X Y Z and total field all plotting right now but you can turn these on and off and to get proper readings uh, needs to be um, on a level surface and uh, pointing north now once I mine was north but uh, I have uh, entered my declination and so that's why it's off seven degrees um Let's see what else. KP index as read from ground level at the station is calculated. Um, it's right on the edge of a KP1. Um, and you can look up the KP index to see how that's scaled. Um, and it follows the same scale. Uh, there's two zoom modes and four plotting modes. Um, as you notice, uh, I've got spike detections off, or what we call spike detections. They're transients. And for almost a year, well, a little bit over a year, we had seen all these spikes. And it was very hard to nail down whether it was a uh, computational error or if they were pulses, um, electromagnetic pulses that were being picked up and I still get these occasionally I've got it hard-coded to detect anything over 120 microteslas um, you'll get a verbal uh, voice warning uh, the hardware unit itself will beep and it'll count the number of detections and let you know what the value of the last one was in previous versions it would print the value of each detection in the plot area but I removed that as it uh, it kind of made a mess of the plots and so down here you can mute all alerts um, it's got a it's got power monitoring um, so if you drop below 4.5 volt I think it is um, it'll notify you just in case you're running on batteries or if you're running on USB power and your USB uh, 5 volt if you have a lot of devices on your USB bus the voltage can uh, drop so uh, I've got a healthy battery status but anyway this will mute the warnings and alerts uh, this will reset the plot uh, the, this graph icon will toggle through the four plotting modes and I'll I'd have to demo those in another video because if I do it now um, I'll lose this data but basically uh, you have an overview uh, plotting mode where it uh, is a very uh, broad range um, scaled plot 15 minutes in length samples are taken once a second the samples are averaged um, about 12 samples per second are averaged and your zoom modes are from uh, 120 microteslas to minus 120 or if you're zoomed in it's uh, 60 microteslas to minus 60 
and that's that's useful for high gauss applications um, if you're working with magnets and things like that and you're wanting to measure their strength and then the second mode is a real-time mode it plots it um, as fast as it can get it which is about um, 12, uh, 12 samples a second it'll plot so it only takes about a minute and a half to complete a plot in real-time mode and the scales are the same variation mode looks just like this except for it's 15 minute long and uh, we can't narrow in um, as close as this but it's 200 the the maximum zoom uh, maximum resolution is a variation of uh, 500 to minus 500 nanoteslas um, in the 24-hour plotting mode um, what is plotted are values that are averaged uh, not only 12 times a second but then 12 times a second over a minute so you're getting a minute averages times 12 so 60 times 12 that's the number of samples being averaged and uh, that was the key uh, thanks to some advice from a, um, a university professor um, I've been able to get down to this range which which is ridiculous for this sensor um, and and what I was wanting to get to is I want to show you the other station and how similar the plots are um, two totally separate rooms two very different environments yet the trend is still the same and the plots are synced so I'll bring the other plot up now we can look at them side by side this is the plot that is uh, in the observation room where there's low noise and no activity, human, um, no electronic activity or anything like that. And uh, pay attention to the, the red ax axis, um, the blue Z axis and orange which is uh, total field and now I'll bring up my second plot now these are two different units two different computers two different environments but as you can see the trend is very very similar so I am confident at this point that I'm not uh, just picking up random noise uh, generated in the environment or generated by the electronics themselves uh, these plots started at the same time and they're in sync and if you can see the trend they don't match exactly but your but your variations are very very close to being the same um, the y-axis is off a little bit and I know why that is um, it has a little bit to do with uh, the other unit um, on the y-axis it's not perfectly level and you can see that uh, it's 2.2 microtesla if it was perfectly level and had a uh, perfect north heading which the one in there does it would be near zero if not zero and this one's the new prototype is absolutely level but it's not quite uh, uh, oriented exactly north so it's a little bit off it'll flirt with the zero once in a while uh, in this raw data area see right there it just went from 1.1 to zero on BY so that's the reason that the only axis that seems to be off is the uh, is the y-axis and then side by side you can compare uh, B total 
and you have the same trend. So two different units, two different plots, two different environments, same software, and we're now down at uh, nano Tesla scale, which I'm very pleased. Um, it's been a lot of hard work, 15 months, and uh, I'm eager to get these on the other two stations and see how they perform. And also, uh, I'm waiting on a good geomagnetic storm to see what kind of results it produces. I'm hoping sometime soon to make this a kit or a ready-to-go Arduino shield for the Arduino Uno. Um, at first I may be just etching those boards and making those shields myself, but hopefully uh, I can get a manufacturer to do uh, nice uh, factory quality um, produced uh, production printed circuit boards. Uh, that will include the sensor, um, Bluetooth, um, everything that's in our units now, but uh, in, a, uh, in a nice Arduino um, enclosure. But anyway, um, I just wanted to share that. Um, it's taken a long time to uh, get this sensor down to scale, and now that we have two units running at this scale, um, I'm able to verify that what I'm seeing um, is indeed uh, variations in the magnetic field and not just random noise. Um, if, you're if you're interested in obtaining one of these units or if you just want to follow the data, um, you can go to www.tsnresearch.com um, the plots are always up. The live data um, uh, is linked up there, and uh, the other the there's a station in Nevada and a station in Maine. Uh, they're still running the old software, but we'll get them updated soon. Um, anybody who's into space weather knows that a lot of times when we get an X-flare or something and uh, and you're going online to see what's going on a lot of your government sources suddenly uh, for, for one reason or, or another um, their plots go silent um, and that was the whole reason I wanted to start this to make my own observations and to get other stations out in different uh, geographic locations and empower other people to, to do the same um, who are interested in space weather and what's going on with our magnetic field. So this is a non-government source that will, uh, will always be up. So next time there's an X-flare or a geomagnetic storm and your ghosts and ACE plots and your NASA data isn't available to you, just remember that we're here for you. Thanks for watching.